Hey guys, what's up? Today, I've got a very simple video for y'all. Basically, I gotta build a computer. Oh, really? Basically, I'm building a really nice, super efficient, dedicated streaming computer. Meaning that the gaming PC is separate from the computer that runs live streams. And uh, just like that, the computer's finished. Yay. I'm kidding. The computer is mostly built because when I shipped it out here, when I moved, I left, I took out the parts that would come out and break and just left the parts that'll stay in for shipping. But we're actually changing out parts, so I'm not just rebuilding the same computer. We need to adjust for the amazing telecommunications infrastructure that we discussed in my last video. What we've got here already is a X299 platform, right? Got a Core i9 9900X, which is a 10 core, 20 thread CPU. Now for the RAM, I'm gonna pop some of this out quickly. May not look super impressive, but this is DDR4 2666, 2400. <laughs> it's some very basic memory, but it's actually a wide temperature dim, meaning that this thing can survive temperatures in the negatives and the over a hundred degrees, uh, which just makes it means it's just super stable and I found this to be the most stable memory I've ever had and for a dedicated streaming PC where uptime is the most important thing on a stream I just want to go with the most stable RAM and not the best looking. So these are InnoDisk wide temperature dims uh, And this these are 16 gig dims. We have four of them for quad channel So we've got 64 gigs of DDR4. These red PCB dims just go really well even without RGB uh, now we do have the EVGA MATX motherboard, so it's super rare to see uh, a build this small with X299. Now, it can get smaller because there are boards like this, which have the 2066 socket, or in this case I think it's the 2011-3, but you get the point, with so dim memory to get quad channel. Uh, but we need more PCI Express than a board like this, so that's why we're going with MATX. And we went with X299 because we need the PCI Express lanes off the CPU for, you know, all of our add-in cards. Speaking of add-in cards, I'm missing one. I stand corrected. Uh, it's not here. Oh, wait, there it is. Well, this is inconvenient. Unfor unfortunately, all of my uh, fiber optic NICs, this is a 10 gig Intel X520 uh, dual 10 gigabit. SFP plus NIC and we have these multi-mode fiber optic transceivers in it. Fortunately, uh, all of them that have the high profile bracket are si currently sitting in the shipping warehouse of a data center in Dallas, Texas because uh, someone is essentially holding my hardware hostage until I pay them a bunch of money, which is just great. See, the problem is I don't have a bunch of money. Uh, once that eventually gets sorted, if it ever does, if I ever find $3,000 to pay for a freight to pick it all up, uh, then, then we'll have more NICs to put in this system. Alright, a capture card is one of the most important components of a dedicated streaming PC because this is the card that allows our main computer to interface here and to capture video on the computer locally. This is a Blackmagic 8K capture card. It is called the DeckLink Quad HDMI Recorder. An older card, but very effective. It's got a PCIe 3.0 X8 and four HDMI inputs. Each input can do 4K at 60 FPS, and if you put them all in a grid, you can have an 8K at 60 FPS input between four HDMIs. This is just a great card for the system. Very overkill, but lets us have four separate inputs uh, for a stream, which means we can do our game capture, we can do our DSLR camera input, and two extra inputs in case we want to do something with a LAN party or something like that we've got all the bandwidth we need here. So we're gonna shove that in to this slot right here, second from the top or the bottom. Oh, and that's that's in the bottom now. Well, now, here's where it goes from standard parts, relatively speaking, to something a little more unique, our graphics card. Originally, I was gonna go with this Cute Pet Edition 4060 Ti, which is just an adorable graphics card shaped like a blue cat. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as you'll see, here we go. Adorable, right? This is actually a two and a half slot card. See, there's the two slots and then it's got an extra half. Super unnecessary. They just put this huge cooler and shroud on it. And uh, unfortunately, it's uh, just 
really not gonna fit in our case especially not with a card below it so fortunately we're gonna have to sacrifice the 4060 but we can actually get a card with the same very unique piece of technology that we need and if it's in a single slot is the intel arc pro a60 a 12 gigabyte pro card from Intel that supports AV1 encoding, which is the technology we're gonna need to be able to, to stream at lower bit rates while maintaining the same high quality. The reason we need no lower bit rates is because bit rate is essentially how much traffic you're sending over the public internet. And when you live where I do and your internet is terrible, you, you need every advantage you can get. So something like this is gonna help us a ton to ensure we have a nice low bit rate while maintaining high quality with AV1 encoding. Uh, so it's got, it's a single slot card with a single six pin input on the back and it's got uh, four full size display ports, which is fine because we're just running a single or two monitors. Beautiful card and will fit perfectly in this, what I would like to consider kind of a pro build. Ah, there we go. Ain't that just beautiful. And then we can just plug in our PCI Express in here. The system used to have a Titan RTX in it, uh, but I found that to be a little unnecessary and again, doesn't support AV1. And there we go. We're almost ready to turn this thing on if we had power over here. We need internal storage. That's where this comes in. This is an Intel SSC. This is an Intel DC 4600 SSD chip. This is an Intel DC P4600 U.2 NVMe SSD. It's 1.6 terabytes enterprise grade SSD with the U.2 connect. And thankfully, another reason we use the motherboard like this, it's got a U.2 slot on board. Probably not even see it, but. And comes around back to my amazing cable management to this cable where we plug this in and nobody uh, comments about the fact that this is just uh, just gonna just gonna just gonna sit back there flawless install uh, now's a good time while we're back here to talk about our power supply and how dusty it is oh that's not good oh man but yeah this is the silverstone sx 750 it's an 80 plus platinum sfx power supply which just fits great in this case and um 750 watts is plenty for our system uh it's been reliable the entire time i've had it. i've had it for a couple of years uh, i will let you know uh, there will be links to any parts you can still buy in the comments or uh, on the youtube product things and uh and if not probably the newer version of the same thing if you're looking to build something like this which you may not be and uh while we're back here i might want to explain these uh quick disconnects right here uh this is actually part of a custom liquid cooler that Asatec built for me again many years ago actually uh, Asatec Dennis I don't know if he's still around but someone from Asatec happens to see this give me a shout uh, but Asatec Dennis built me this custom cooler with quick disconnects on it and a 120 millimeter rad meaning I could do crazy things like this like run it through a case without doing custom liquid cooling uh, maybe not the most effective cooler 120 but it, it cools the system absolutely fine with this Noctua fan um, Wow, there's a lot of components companies sent to me in here. So, Asetech sent me that, and Noctua actually sent me this industrial PPC fan that's in the top. I don't know what happened. I'm standing here with the battery and the, the attachment for the blower thing I had to blow out the case, and I, I, I don't know where it went. We got our amazing German keyboard and mouse. <laughs> the quartz. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, we're not gaming this time. Uh, we will do something separate gaming on this graphics card in the future as it is a pro level card. Therefore, we got a game on it. But today we're just doing the streaming PC. So let's see if this thing works. This won't turn on. We've got our monitor right here. Uh, this is the only monitor I echoed find and it's on my Lumix S5 camera that has broken. Don't know what's wrong with it. Just doesn't work anymore. That's great use of 2,500 US dollars. But at least the screen is still useful. We're just seeing if this will work like we want it to. All right, first time turning it on. Here we go. Oh God, that's dusty. Oh man, X299 micro, look at that. Okay guys, so um, I'm trying to record the screen here and because uh, this, this monitor actually has a SATA port on it for recording input it's meant to record the raw output of this camera so it can do 6k recording but 
Anyways, it takes normal SATA SSDs, and uh, I couldn't find any normally. I couldn't really find any, but you know, normally I would use my Kingston KC600s because, as you can probably figure out, I kind of like Kingston. But uh, in all seriousness, this is one of the only SATA drives that I have found that actually can maintain recording on this monitor at full 5K or 6K. Uh, without dropping frames or randomly stopping recording or overheating somewhere. They're all gone. I do not have them currently No one knows where they are They're just gone. I've got a stopgap solution. We're gonna try. I don't think these are gonna work, but I have these knockoff Kasten SSD. Oh, they're upside down. I've got these knockoff Kasten SSD. Who needs Kingston? There's too many letters. We've got Kasten so uh yeah, we're gonna try. We're gonna try some of those. I don't think it's gonna work. Let's uh, get this computer turned back on. Oh, that's not good. Ah, that is. That makes me uncomfortable. Let's just get that as vertical as possible. And let's uh. Let's put that over there. Uh, no, I don't want to enter setup. But yeah, as you can see, now we can like record the BIOS and everything, which is super cool. The mall. Oh, I gotta change my password. There we go. Uh, what CPU we've got? It is a 9900X, so it's a 10 core with a nice high clock speed. Yeah, see, we're chilling at 4.1 gigahertz. Then we got 64 gigs of memory running at 2400. Uh, 1.5 terabyte SSD. Our boring internet connection. And then we've got our Arc Pro A60. We have all the drivers installed and all that. We have our 12 gigs memory. So what I want to open now real quick is OBS. This is, I'm not hooking this up for a little while because I still have to get like my internet kind of fixed. Um, but I would just like to show uh, that we have the AV1 options. Uh, failed to authenticate to Twitch. Hmm, I wonder why. Maybe because my Twitch account was banned permanently. So if we go into settings, and we go to output, as you can see, oh, that's the streaming encoder, which isn't supported on Twitch yet. But the video encoder, we've got, oh, now, QuickSync Video AV1. There we go. So we do have AV1 available now. Yay! And uh, just because I want to show you guys, in case anyone is looking into building like a a professional or like a much beefier streaming PC, kind of like this one, uh, this input card is probably one of my favorites. The Elgados, I hate. Um, I've had a few of them. The 4K one was a nightmare. I had to switch to Aver Media. Aver Media's are pretty good too. Um, but the Elgato was a nightmare with like audio delays and all this. This black magic card is probably one of the best I've worked with though. Um, because basically, if I can get this keyboard working, when you add a new source, a video capture device, right, there it comes up with like eight different options. You have the WDM captures and you have the video captures and then they also come up as their own audio sources. So you can just have HDMI just for audio for something specific or you could capture you know, you can mute and tune the audio of each HDMI instead of just tuning all audio. It's super awesome. Um, and I love the way they do this. And like I said, it's just it's just a really, really nice um, UI. And it just works. It, it worked out of the box. And I saw the driver and boom, OBS recognized it. I've never had an issue with it. Uh, plus, uh, I haven't even had an issue doing like weird resolutions. So you can custom set the resolution on here. Let me, uh, let me actually show you guys. So you can set the resolution like naturally it has like these so you can set all these resolutions up to 4k wide um, but you can even type one in so I used to do 3440 by 1440 or 3840 by 2.16 million for example by 1440 and then you can match the output FPS. 
and then it'll it'll create the bigger window. I don't know, just some things I like. It always works because I stream. I I have an ultra wide monitor, and I like to stream with it uh, whenever it works. Thank you, Samsung. It doesn't work. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm happy. This will be a much better streaming PC once I get a the slightest semblance of home internet. I hope to be streaming with this thing. Uh, and like I said, there will be a part two where we go a little more in depth. But hopefully I just want to show you guys the card, the AV1, and just some of the cool stuff that I see. And uh, this, this really cool build yet again. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I'm always 100% confident that uh, I was supposed to do something else. I, I don't know. It's been like a week since I was recording, so... Who knows? That's the video. That's all, folks.